Hello, it's yet another great privilege for me to bring you Edify this day. My name is Robert Mwando, and today I speak to you about mastering emotions in times of crisis. Several people have asked me how I remain so calm in stormy weather. By stormy weather, I mean times of crisis. My simple answer is, I guess that's just who I am. Often wearing a smile and a calm demeanor. Does that mean I don't get on the edge? Absolutely not. Behind the calm demeanor is a boiling pot of emotions. The trick isn't in just the personality trait. I have, grown, I, I have had to grow and improve my emotional intelligence. When it comes to happiness and success in life, emotional intelligence matters just as much as intellectual ability. It's a known fact the smartest people are not always the most successful or the most fulfilled in life. They are academically brilliant people and yet they struggle at social and personal relationships. Intellectual ability or your intelligence quotient, IQ, isn't enough on its own to achieve success in life. You probably have met former schoolmates who you thought were not so intelligent and yet they are successful in life. Emotional quotient or EQ is the ability to understand, use and manage your emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. Emotional intelligence helps you to build stronger relationships, succeed at school and work, and achieve your career and personal goals. It can also help you to connect with your feelings, turn intention into action, and make informed decisions about what matters most to you. In times of crisis, major or minor, this is the most valuable weapon of defense in your armory. Emotional intelligence is commonly defined by four attributes. One, self-awareness. This helps you to recognize your own emotions and how they affect your thoughts and behavior. You know your strengths and weaknesses and have self confidence. Number two, self-management. You are able to control impulsive feelings and behaviors. Manage your emotions in health ways. You take initiative. You follow through on commitments and adapt to changing circumstances. Number three, social awareness. You have empathy. You can understand the emotions, needs, and concerns of other people. Pick up on emotional cues, feel comfortable socially, and recognize the power dynamics in a group or an organization. And number four, relationship management. You know how to develop and maintain good relationships, communicate clearly, inspire and influence others, work well in a team, and manage conflict. Here in Uganda, research shows that the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown is a probable cause of the increased cases of suicide and self-immolations. I cannot downplay the magnitude of the stress this crisis has caused to all people across the globe. And these times are stressful for individuals and their families, as well as for entire communities and the country. The stress generates worry, anxiety, fear, and grief, and even depression. But scriptures are full of examples of individuals who faced moments of crisis in all spheres of life. One that fascinates me most is the Bible character Job. At the peak of his losses, he demonstrates such high level of EQ. 
The entire book is full of expression of emotions when crisis hits. Some of the characters in this story certainly had their emotional intelligence in limbo. Mrs. Job, for example, in chapter 2 and verse 9, this is what she says. Then Job's wife said to him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Can you imagine? How could she dare a man to trade his integrity for death? Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. People of integrity would rather die than trade integrity for anything. Joseph couldn't trade it for momentary sexual pleasure with Potiphar's wife. Just like we have seen, Job's response is a is typical of a man with self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and good relationship management. In verse 10, he responds and he says, You speak as a foolish woman speaks. He told her, Should we accept from God only good and not adversity? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. In the same book of Job, we also read of Job's three friends in chapters 2 through verse 11 to 13 and their response. It was a high level of emotional intelligence for them to just offer their presence for days and seven nights without saying a word. And like his wife, who offered her words rather than her comforting presence. The three friends offered what I like to call presence ministry. Sometimes in crisis, we don't have to say a word. We simply need to be there for those who are hardest hit. God has gifted humanity with the ability to survive even the hardest times. But it's one thing to survive crisis and another thing to thrive. We best thrive when we entrust God with our lives. He remains God in all seasons. In this song by Bill and Gloria Gaitha, the chorus sums it all up. It says, For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He will make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. God bless you.